CD1 Life Coaching with Kandu The Sacred Council 1 out of 32 The Guiding Force of Kandu Kandu, the guiding force of the Creator. Make God a reality in your life. I am Kandu, the power of life and love the eternal life-creating and life-sustaining force, or, in more familiar terms, the Creator, the God-force, or just God, which has been given so many names and present, inside, and connected to everything, otherwise it could not exist. Quote, God is the universal substance in existing things. He compresses all things. He is the fountain of all being. In him exists everything that is. Seneca. End of quote. You know about, my, about me because you hear many people talking about me, and everywhere places of worships are erected to remember me. Possibly you are talking about me as well and visiting regularly some of these places in order to remember me or have other ways thinking about me. I feel close to you at these times when you are thinking about me. I love you all so much, there are no words to describe it. I am the one who started Crystallia, which you call the creation, and I am the essence within you, your soul. You are my children, crystal children of light, and you took the opportunity to experience a special garden called creation. Quote, On the path of God-realization, one must become unfettered like a child. Azur Maharaj Charan Singh Ji End of quote. When you tune into me, being all wisdom, love and power, and understand to live life as a visitor, Realizing that I reside within you and in everybody and everything, you will not only recognize me within yourself, others and the world, but you also start living life with the real love, for that love is my essence, and it only gives. Quote, the current of love from the one God is flowing through the entire universe. What do you think when you look at the face of a man? Look at him carefully. He is not a man, but a current of love, the essence of love, which permeates him. Rumi. End of quote. You can look at life from my point of view or your point of view. Let me become the consciousness of your mind and walk through life as if you were in my shoes. Quote, God must become an activity in our consciousness. Joel S. Goldsmith. End of quote. Everything in Crystallia, the mortal world, which you call uh, creation, is created by my love and sustained by my love. This love originates from my ocean of love and travels down into Crystallia, inside invisible rivers, of eternal sound and eternal light. You may ask what the ocean of love is, and I cannot describe its beauty, as your mind cannot comprehend it, for it was there before the mind was created. Quote, in the ocean in which I am, neither I exist nor the ocean. None knows the secret except him who is thus transformed. Kawaya Farid U Din Atar. End of quote. Although it is hard to describe, you know what it is, as your deep longing is connected to it. Because here you can have that everlasting peace, love, and happiness you all seek. However, it is not a place, but a state of super consciousness, and the consciousness I am referring to has nothing to do with your mind or intellect. Quote, I could not say I believe, I know, 
I have had the experience of being gripped by something that is stronger than myself, something that people call God. Carl Gustav Jung. End of quote. Stay connected with me through silent prayer and meditation in all your adventures and experiences. Be that vehicle through which I can experience creation, and you will have a great adventure. Quote, I myself do nothing. The Holy Spirit accomplishes all through me. William Blake. End of quote. In order for Crystallia, the creation, to exist, it first of all needed to be connected to my life force, otherwise nothing could exist. Without my energy, there is no life. Having been only one energy before the creation was created, after the creation was created, there were now two main energy forces. One going out, representing the outward energy force of the adventure away from me. As souls, crystal children of light, you needed a body and communication device called the mind, and it holds all the information about Crystallia, the creation. This mind, and within it, Crystallia, the creation, with its endless experiences, is governed by this outward force, who as well needed a team that would represent the laws of the universe and nature, so everything could function. You will learn more about this team, which exists within you and outside of you. These are the members of the Sacred Council, all there to assist you during your journey. Then there was the second main energy force that would be in charge to bring you back after your adventure would be over, called the Inward Energy Force. Quote, so you have to come to know light through its opposite. An opposite reveals its opposite in the process of manifestation. Rumi. End of quote. The Amazing Uniton Never forget that inside everything in Crystallia you can find me, for without my love nothing could exist. I addressed everything in creation as a living uniton, and there are endless unitons to be experienced. Quote, God gave us the gift of life. It is up to us to give ourselves the gift of living well. Voltaire. End of quote. Everything in creation is a uniton, such as creation itself, a planet, a country, a city, a house, a room. The universal mind, the mind, the body, an organ or cell. A forest, a garden, a plant or seed. A business, a department, profession, a partnership. A relationship, a marriage, a family. A hobby or venture, such as a study project, an invention, writing of a book, sport, music, exercise, painting, etc. A thought, a dream, a wish or fantasy, how bizarre they may be. Quote, the pure impulse of dynamic creation is formless. And being formless, the creation it gives rise to can assume any and every form. The Kabbalah. End of quote. In general, you use the word relationship in connection with having a partner. But actually you have a relationship with everything, with all these unitons. Everything is alive. Your car, your home, your clothes, the sun, a garden, a plant, and everything else in creation as well. For I could not live and be when it would not be connected to my life force. Quote, the life which is not examined is not worth living. Plato, end of quote. Just like in a human relationship, you can have your difficulties with anything else as well. Think about getting upset when your car breaks down or when you have to repair something in the house. In a relationship, you have something to offer and the people and all other things as well. The sun offers you warm, the car the opportunity to get around faster, and your homes offer you shelter. To realize that you have a relationship with everything, with me inside, can spare you from a lot of struggle. Quote, One universe 
made up of all that is, and one God in it all, and one principle of living and being, and one law, the reason shared by all thinking creatures, and one truth. Marcus Aurelius. End of quote. It is constantly reminding yourself what the things in creation offer you, and how they keep on giving, even though you may abuse the relationship. This awareness may help you in your human relationship, which is more complicated, as you create your struggle by not wanting to give anymore, or calculating in your giving, or expecting something in return. You can learn from nature, as it always gives and gives equal to anybody. This is a reflection of me. Quote, we should give as we would receive, cheerfully, quickly, and without hesitation. For there is no grace in a benefit that sticks to the fingers. Seneca. End of quote. Each uniton is built from material elements. Some are dominant and others almost invisible for the human eye. But everything is within everything. All these material elements are connected, and each one has various purpose, and they are subject to the universal and nature's laws. Each uniton can only exist when it has an opposite, the law of duality. Has a lifespan, the life, the law of time. Has its own cycles and seasons, the law of cycles is constantly changing, the law of change, is individual and unique in its own design, the law of individuality, has certain necessities to survive, the law of necessities, is whole and complete, the law of wholeness, has an order where each part has a role or place in order to function, the law of order, place and function is a reflection of the smaller and bigger unit, the law of reflections, has its own unique rhythm and vibration energy level, attracting or repelling each other, the law of rhythms and vibrations, expands and contracts, the law of expansion and contraction, triggered by an action creates a reaction and chain reaction, affecting itself and all other unitons. The law of cause and effect. Memorizes through repetition. The law of repetition. Because its essence is perfect, it seeks perfection. The law of improvement and perfection. Is in service to its creator and of its creation. The law of service. Has its own history. The law of comprehension. Me, myself. And all these forces, and many others, are like characters within you, all guiding you in your adventure. This is your sacred counsel. Make use of them, because in any adventure there are tricks, traps and treasures. Otherwise, it wouldn't be an adventure. Quote, One way to get the most out of life is to look upon it as an adventure. William Feather. End of quote. Kandu, knowing me and knowing what to do with me. Let's see how you unnecessarily struggle with my force in various aspects of your life, how you could change your perspective and even make some practical changes. There are endless words that can be connected to any subject, and each subject can have many books because each subject can be approached from various perspectives and angles. Most important is not to forget that all that is said or written is merely an opinion, a truth and not the truth. Because the spoken and written word is part of the creative world, created in opposites, constantly changing and bound to time, and there is always more than can be said or written about any subject. Regarding the sacred council, taking, talking about any subject, know that this understanding applies to their information as well. 
The information is from their particular point of view and brought to you through the world of a visionary and mystical fiction. Hopefully, it contributes to your life and assists you to experience life in a more conscious, mystical and magical way. By hearing or reading this information, you will come to the conclusion that you know this already, and you do, because this is part of your universal and spiritual inheritance. And often, we just need one word or sentence that inspires and motivates us to do things differently or to think about a certain subject from a different perspective. In other words, you don't need to study and know these books by heart because you know it already in your heart, you just need reminders. Sometimes you will discover that information overlaps because all these laws are so closely related and interrelated, but most important is that we can assist ourselves with the guidance of the forces in every detail of daily living and have a mirror at hand to reflect in order not to fall into ignorance or have an excuse. Dealing with your real self, the soul. In regards to spiritual living, when you think about yourself, do you instantly identify with yourself the name given to you and the person you see in the mirror? Do you realize that this is just the mind and the body you are referring to, but what about the real you? The other question you could ask yourself, if you rather refer to yourself as the body and mind or as something greater. When you come from the consciousness being a body and mind, you are restricted in your dealings with yourself, others and the world. But when you come from your real self and that level of consciousness, your soul, you would come from eternal love and wisdom. Stay aware that God, the life-creating and life-sustaining force, is in you and in everything and everybody. Nothing can exist without this life-creating and life-sustaining power. Show your respect with all you do and realize His power to create in each thought, word and deed. So be careful what you create and keep Him in mind all the time. Basically. You are in God's presence all the time, but you create, unfortunately, other gods and forget about the true one. You worship others, buildings, rituals, powers, money, food, and endless other things that are now your gods. None other than him deserves your worship. Even his true messengers do not want to be worshipped as they show you the path within yourself to find him and to worship Him, and Him alone. The way to worship God is thus to keep Him in your thoughts all the time, or even better, by you stepping aside, and let Him have His adventure through you. The way to stay that focused is a moment-to-moment -moment and lifelong process, so that your attraction for the world and your attachment to them gets taken over by you getting attracted and attached to him. In order to get that done again is to first find the real you, the soul inside your body, which is called self-realization, which can lead to God-realization. Quote, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Paul, Corinthians 6, 19, end of quote. Dealing with your mind. In regards to managing and dealing with the mind, compare the mind with a computer. The original mind is called the universal mind, which is like a hard drive of this computer. It holds the information about the creation and how to live in harmony with it. These programs inside this mind computer are beautiful and practical, although they are from the mortal world, created in opposites, constantly changing and also bound to time. Walking around in your body, your sense organs are the keyboard of this computer. 
through which you are in contact with the outside world. Your intended adventure was for you as a soul to come and experience the creation, but instead of just experiencing the things of the mortal world, you started to take it all for real. You started to identify with the mind, the programs, your body and the outside world. Your sense organs took over the show and are in the driver's seat instead of your soul, and you lost your direct contact with the Creator. You fell into a trap created by yourself, and instead of experiencing spontaneously things, you wanted certain experiences again and again, and others you thought you could keep out. You forgot that all in creation, including the mind, is a creation of opposites, bound to time and constantly changing. Within this computer, you started to create and condition your personal hard drive driven by the sense organs. Not knowing what happened, who you really are, where you came from, and what you were coming to do in creation, you now feel lost and lonely looking for security in a world which is impermanent and not wanting to feel this loneliness, you just keep yourself busy with self-created reality programs. The original plan of the mind assisting you has now become the source of distraction. The life you have and everything happening in it is your dream world, an illusion. You have created these programs and realities by yourself and you keep on creating new ones. You are now even thinking that you are humans, living in and being of the world. There are so many programs created after each other, programs on top of each other and mixed programs between all the information and realities. It is a labyrinth, an endless web and net and it is very hard to see what triggers what and why is this and that. You might have to make a deep study on the mind in order to see how deep the rabbit hole goes in which you have lost yourself. You have replaced the real you, the soul, with the mind, the body and the world around you. This is what you now call real, but which is not forever as it is part of the created world, created in opposites, constantly changing and bound to time. And what about the creator of all, including your soul? Here we touch on something real, which is forever and everlasting. And that's where you need to start identifying with, at least when you really want to find out about real things like the soul and the creator. You have to let go of the mind, the body and the world and go beyond them in order to find the real treasures. Quote, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Matthew 6.21 End of quote. Dealing with your body In regards to dealing with your physical body, no that it can only exist because the life-creating and life-sustaining force is connected to it, otherwise it could not exist. Being a soul, the body is your vehicle to explore the creation, and it needs to be kept in optimum condition in order to spare you from a lot of agony, additional maintenance and breakdowns. The body vehicle was meant for the soul at venturing the creation, but you did put the mind under the dictates of your sense organs and which is now behind the wheel. The mind, or in other words your ego, which identifies with the body, mind and the world, needs to get out of the driver's seat and the soul needs to get back in it again. The gift of a human body is a special gift in which your home journey can start, but as long as, you're driven, as your vehicle is driven by the mind, you have no chance in accomplishing that mission. Treasure this gift, for it is your birthright. You are not phys physical beings that could have a spiritual experience, but you are spiritual beings that have a momentarily physical experience. Adventure the world as a soul and start your home journey, 
And in order to accomplish this, find a teacher, guide and master who has done this and follow the instructions and his teachings. Quote, Know the soul as the rider, the body as the chariot, the buddhi, the intellect, as the charioteer, and manas, the mind, as the reins. The sense organs are the horses, and the sense objects are the road over which the chariot runs. The soul joined to all the above is the experiencer. The Upanishads. End of quote. Dealing with communication. In regards to communication, stay aware that God, the life creating and life sustaining force, is in everybody and everything. Know that you are speaking to God all the time, 24 hours a day, talking to yourself, others, or to anything in creation, for He is in everybody and everything. Realize that His power to create is in each word you use. So be careful what you create. Quote, the mind is everything. What you think you will become. Buddha. End of quote. Dealing with food. In regards to dealing with nutrition, give thanks to all you consume, because the eternal life creating and life sustaining force, which you have given endless names, is the essence of your food and thus connected to this source, otherwise it could not exist. Your essence is also that force, and to stay in consciousness, connected to your real self, your soul, and that eternal source, make that connection and awareness each time you drink and eat something. This is the real nourishment. However, watch out that it doesn't just become a ritual, and realize that all is a gift, and that you actually should say, thanks to everything in and during your life adventure. Saying thanks is also a reminder that the foods and drinks you consume have to give their life to give you life. In regards to the food that have to give their life, be conscious to take the life foods that cause the least amounts of pain to that creature in creation. You do not have to be an expert in spirituality, religion, and the active element theory are educated for the matter of fact. Just feel and look at all the reactions and listen to the sounds of those creatures and creations that have to give their life for our palate. The more fresh foods from nature you consume, the more pure life force energy you receive, and the more food that went through any process man invented and manipulated, the lesser pure life force is left. All these lesser pure foods and drinks leave waste and disease behind, and this costs a lot of vital life energy. As everything is a gift, let's nourish this body well, which is as well a momentary gift with the best way possible products, and the best products are the gift of nature in their most natural state. This is the vital fuel for the body car in which the soul and creator reside and through which we adventure this world. Reconnect more with this eternal force which is nameless but which you have given a name and reconnect more with your real self, the soul, because when you do not do this you will feel lonely and emptiness which you then try to fill up with food and drinks. Most un unfulfilling habits have here their origin. This is the source of all trouble and disease. So get to the source and create a new life foundation in which and through which you find fulfillment. Quote, Let food be thy medicine, thy medicine shall be thy food. Hippocrates. End of quote. Dealing with staying fit. In regards to fitness, fitness, it is your duty to keep your body fit as it is your obligation to the soul, which is a part particle of the Creator and residing in it. Quote, For we are the temple 
of the living God. Corinthians 6.16 End of quote. This body is just given to the soul in order to explore the life in the world of mind and matter. But even more important, it is the vehicle in which the soul which starts its journey back to its original home. In order to accomplish both missions and to avoid lots of maintenance and breakdowns, it is very important to keep this vehicle in the best condition as possible. In a sense, everything, including your physical body, is a momentary gift, and out of respect for the Creator, the giver and owner, we also have an obligation. That goes with it, each gift. Dealing with your life partner. In regards to your relationship, know that you have a relationship with everything and everybody, but that the relationship with your life partner is probably the most challenging of all of them. The love story on the physical plane is just a memory of the real love story which takes place on a spiritual plane where the soul, your real essence, is in love and reunites with its creator. The most important fact to remember is that the essence of you and your partner is a soul and particle of the creator. And only when you keep this in mind will you be able to overlook all the shortcomings and imperfections in one another. One day you will experience that real love again and happily live forever after. Quote, the only way to strengthen love is by meditation. There is no other way, because the love which we get by experience cannot be compared to any other type of love. Uzua Maraj Charan Singh Ji. End of quote. Dealing with your children. In regards to parenting, you must stay aware that children came through you, but that they are not from you. Just like all of you, you come on your own for an adventure, enter a particular family, spend time with them, but at the end, you all depart on your own. Quote, Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. You may house their bodies, but not their souls, for their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. Cahil Gibran. End of quote. Parents are more like managers than owners, and it is your privilege to assist the children allotted to you in the best way possible. You all come and go, but one thing never changes, which is you all being part of a bigger family, a family of souls that live forever. It is that essence within you and which is in everything and everybody, for without nothing could exist, that is the everlasting thing. This is the source and force of the Creator that created and sustains all, and you can give thanks to everything, not just for your daily food, but for everything and all your experiences, good or bad, in your eyes. All are gifts, being part of your momentary adventure in creation. Tell your children about this energy which is beyond form and name, although it has been given so many names, and remind them of their true identity, being eternal children of light and drops of the everlasting ocean of love. Life in creation is a great adventure, but an even more greater adventure is to find the real treasure within oneself and in everybody and everything. The treasures in the creation are just for a moment, but finding the real treasure is forever. In order to find this treasure, you all need a guide who has found this treasure and who sees this treasure of eternal life, light and love in everybody and everything. However, you can remind your children that inside everybody and everything is this treasure. Quote, Try to find someone who really belongs to us and to whom we really can belong forever. Huzur Maharaj Charan Singh. 
End of quote. Dealing with preserving the planet. In regards to taking care of the planet Earth, realize that it and everything in and on it can only exist through the essence of life itself, the eternal life creating and life sustaining force. At this moment, you as eternal souls have your momentary adventure on this planet inside a human body equipped with a mind. You lost your direct contact with your essence and are really lost and lonely, and to compensate you seek the pleasures of the world, forgetting that all of that contributes to the destruction of the planet. This planet, just like your body, is your momentary home, and you are to take care of them, for they are gifts. Quote, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all that dwell therein. Psalm 24.1 Give thanks to all the gifts and respect them with the consciousness that the Creator resides in all. Dealing with the teenage years In regards to the teenage years, Know, this, know that this is a very special time as many physical changes are taking place inside and on the outside of the body. It could be looked at as a new birth, as so many changes are happening all at the same time. The parent and the teenager should be aware of this very important time in which the teenager is looking to establish their own identity, away from the identification with the parents. The problem the teenager is facing that by establishing their own identity that they are still for many years dependent on the parents. When this fact and time is understood by both parties, the teenager doesn't need to forcefully break away and provoking the situation. Awareness, acceptance and respect is being called for and when this is done with love, things will turn out much easier. Children do not belong as a possession to you as parents, because they only come through you. They, just like you, came on their own. They have their individual life adventure and will depart alone. There is no power game needed on both sides. Overlook the physical body and difficulties and know that inside the essence is a soul, which is pure love. Keep loving each other from this level of awareness. Quote, you can listen to your ego or you can listen to your spirit. Ma Jaya Sati Bhagatavati. End of quote. Dealing with getting older. In regards to dealing with getting older, know that after your physical birth, you are all getting older, and one day you will lay off this physical body. Realize this. In regards to all your energy spent, is there also some left for the soul and the creator and being prepared for the home journey? When you would become older and mature, are you still putting all your energy out into the world of mind and matter or are you finally facing the fact that your body soon had its time? You can live forever, but not in the realm and dimension you are in at the moment. And it's real prayer that will get you out of there. Quote, Life does not begin with birth and end with death. We are an expression of the infinite life, which has no beginning and shall never come to an end. Uzur Maharaj Charan Singh Ji. End of quote. Dealing with stress. In regards to dealing with stress, no. That while being in the world you have many duties just think of all the needs of your body and of course a list of duties in connection to family others and your work however this doesn't seem to be enough as you tend to add more and more and you having to deal with all the obligations and stresses coming with it all why not thinking more about your obligation towards your soul and the creator and minimizing many other not-needed obligations, creating unnecessary stress. 
Quote, Duty which falls naturally to one's lot, performed without hankering for its fruit, devoid of attachment, without attraction or aversion, that is said is born of sattva. Bhagavad Gita. End of quote. Dealing with weight. In regards to dealing with weight, you all forget that the essence of life the life force of God or any other name given to this energy that creates and sustains life is inside of you. In addition, you forget the reason why you have received the human body. Your body is the vehicle to explore the world with and the vehicle to start your home journey in. Because you have no direct connection with this essence and your true self being a soul, you feel empty and fill up your mind and body with the things of this world, unfulfilled and fed up with the momentary pleasures of the world, you keep on looking for answers on the outside and filling up, but forgetting that these answers can only be found on the inside. Start dealing with your body from a higher perspective. Take your way dilemma to another dimension and take care of that soul that resides in your body or do it out of respect for the Creator. Quote, Life is the first gift, love is the second, and understanding the third. March Percy. End of quote. Dealing with disease. In regards to dealing with disease, so much is talked about the loss of short memory being called Alzheimer and amnesia. But in a sense, you all have this, as you constantly forget who you really are, and you forget about the Creator. Look at the endless diseases you create, and then how you deal with it. Do you realize that the essence of each disease is as well God, the life force, or any other name given to that eternal life? Otherwise it could not exist. Each virus and each bacteria, yes, even cancer, each cell. You can approach the disease, the body, its disease parts, cells and systems from this point of view. The essence of life is in every cell, system and part of your body. Quote, it is only by forgetting yourself that you draw nearer to God. Henry David Thoreau. End of quote. Look beyond disease, the labels, and look beyond you, the body, and the one who will receive the name. Look at every cell of your body being an eternal child of light and accept them all equally and give extra love to those cells that are not well. It is your family. Dealing with emotions. In regards to dealing with emotions, Know that your adventure and creation is a mixture of positive and negative experience, but you do not need to get attached to them, which you do by associating an emotion to them. To them. Those you like, you like to experience again, and those you don't like, but realize that both are connected to fear. Fear is the opposite of the life-creating and life-sustaining force, which is only love. Accept each emotion as its own experience, but do not connect it to any phase, place, or event. Quote, when there is realization, there is no fear. Where fear lives, the Lord is not. O oh, saints, remember this, for Kabir has said it after great deliberation. Salok Kabir. End of quote. Dealing with business. In regards to dealing with your professional life, know that most of your lives are all about money and business, and forgetting your business with the Creator and your real essence, the soul. Nothing belongs to you, as all belongs to Him. Keep in mind that He is the owner of your business, and you will deal differently with your profession, business, staff, and money. You either want to be the gods of the physical power and money and possession, or you keep him 
as your God. Quote, Let us not go faster than God. It is our emptiness and our thirst he needs, not our plentitude. Jacques Maritain. End of quote. Look through his eyes at your profession and business and manage it from that level of consciousness. He is the owner and you are working for him. Dealing with destructive habits. In regards to dealing with destructive habits and addictions, know that all of you are addicted to so many things and some of them are very destructive. And you may want to question yourself if you are worshiping them as gods. Basically, when they have the power over you and you follow the dictates of your mind, they are the ruler and gods of your life. Reconnect with your real essence, the soul, and know that you have the ultimate power within you. It is that power that is just love, and tune into loving yourself for what you are, and when you accept and love, the negative power will fade. You are children of love, and you do not need to fall victim to any negative and destructive habits and addictions. Quote, Dare to understand you are divine truth. My Jaya Sakti Bhagavati. End of quote. Dealing with studying. In regards to studying, know that this is only possible because a life force that is within you and inside the subject you are studying about. Without this life-creating and life-sustaining force, nothing can exist. Be thankful to, for these gifts and use them in a proper way and for the right reasons. Even when that you are studying is just for the sake of experience or when it's meant to assist you in supporting your own lifehood, be sure that during your studies or after you are finished, that it is not for selfish reasons or implies suffering to others and other creations, other creatures in the creation. Most important, do not forget your spiritual inward study journey in order to claim your spiritual inheritance. Quote, the truth is not for all men, but only for those who seek it. Ayn Rand. End of quote. Dealing with friendships. In regards to friendships, know that on the level of your soul you find friends forever, because on the physical level your friends are mortal. The soul, which is part of the Creator, is your everlasting friend, and this essence is the life creating and life sustaining force which is in everything and everybody, for without it nothing could exist. Honor all your real friends, because they are inside everything and everyone, and thank them for whatever they are. For without them, you have no world. Reconnect with the soul within you, and everything and everybody will be your friend, for they are all part of your worldly experience. If you have a kind and loving heart, then you are kind and loving to everybody. You are helpful to everybody. You see, if we are filled with love and devotion for the Father, all such quality rise in us like cream of the milk. You don't have to strive for them. They become part and parcel of you, because then you see the Lord in everyone, and you are humble before everyone. Huzur Maharaj Charan Singh Ji, end of quote. It would be great to have friends, who remind you about these facts. Summary Kandu Kandu, the guiding force of the Creator Many of you are on a spiritual path, go to church, believe in God, meditate and understand the higher principles of living, but still struggle endlessly in so many aspects of your life, because you look upon me, Kandu, the life-creating and life-sustaining force as something external, or as a concept. In essence, you, crystal children of light, are souls, drops of my eternal ocean of love. And in order to experience 
your real self and me, you have to make God a consciousness in your life with every step you take and with every breath you make. I am the essence of everything created, for without me it could not exist. Summary What is left when you take out the world around you, your body and your mind? Yes, the real you, the soul, the essence, the force of life and love, eternity and God. The eternal life-giving and sustaining force is your true essence. It is an eternal ocean of love without name or form, but which has been given so many names. You and everything in creation are drops of this eternal ocean. Equipped with a mind and body, you as souls, drops of the eternal ocean, came down in consciousness inside the audible river of sound and light to experience the creation. Everything is connected to me through this river, for without it there is no life. Give thanks to the essence of life and love in everybody and everything. Identify with that which you truly are and stop identifying with the mind, body and creation. Stay connected to your real essence, your soul and me. In order to make God a consciousness in your life, either use this summary related to the guiding force of Kondi to prepare yourself for the day of how you are going to approach life, others and situations, or use it to write down your changes, how you handle the things differently by having read or listened to the information about Kondi.